Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you Shazia Hobbs. Another hero of this movement. Shazia has been fighting this fight at the sharp end all her life. I was raised in a time where we were taught that sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Today we have adults who go crying to the police and authorities because someone said a mean word to them, a mean nasty word that hurt their feelings. We have children who are being raped all across the UK, but we focus on mean tweets and mean words on social media. Stabbings have become a daily occurrence on the streets of London, yet we have police monitoring the internet to find those who treat the, tweet the truth about Islam. If I say anything about other religious figures such as Jesus or religions such as Christianity, no one really cares. No one gets so offended that they brand me a hate preacher or issue a fatwa on me. All religions can and should be challenged and mocked or ridiculed. However, we all know too well that one particular religion is exempt from any challenge or ridicule. When we have a government that not only permits but also openly supports Muslim organisations such as Tel Mama, who we know fabricate crimes to gain sympathy and funding, we know it is a sure sign that some in the Muslim community are seeking to gain control of the narrative. And these are the Muslims we most certainly do not want within the corridors of power. The government's home affair committee even met with Selmana and other prominent Muslims in December 2016 to discuss the so-called dangers of Islamophobia and how this should be addressed. Where is our funding and support? If a child from other faiths no longer wishes to adhere to that faith, they are usually free to leave without drama. If a Muslim child tells their parent they no longer believe in Allah, they risk being beaten, being disowned, and in the worst case scenario, face the possibility of death, as the Quran states. How can our government allow this and not protect Muslim children who wish to leave Islam. Instead, these children often need to live a double life, to live a lie. You could be mistaken for thinking we are ruled by Sharia in this country. It would be fair and honest to suggest that one of the biggest concerns our government has is towards advancing Islam. The only religion we are not allowed to mock or criticise is Islam. Why has our government and authorities put Islam on such a pedestal of privilege? A Muslim Council of Britain document states that integration has to be a two-way street. They ought to look on the streets of the UK where young girls are taken out of school and forced into marriages and then covered in black sacks with only their eyes showing. How do you integrate with someone whose very clothing tells you to back off? Instead of always whining about Islamophobia, fix the rot in your own communities. You are far from perfect. Being born into a Muslim home does not give you superiority over everyone else. Pedophiles exist in your communities. Children are raped daily. I am using my freedom of speech while I still can to say that Islam is misogynistic, homophobic, violent, sectarian and racist. Without any possibility of reform, the only place Islam belongs is behind closed doors, or even better still, in Muslim majority countries. Practice your religion all day long, just do not force it onto those who wish to live in peace. Thank you, Shazia Hobbs!